Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you a different way of using the using keyword in C Sharp and that is in the context of disposing an object and I'm going to show you why it can lead to some cleaner code with that pretty smart usage in my opinion. If you like the of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell and for more training, check out nickchapsas.com. Now, before I move on, I want to let you know that I just launched my From Zero to Hero Dependency Injection in .NET course. In that course, I take you from the very basics of dependency injection to the fundamentals. We do a deep dive into the DI framework itself. We see how we can use some pretty advanced patterns and approaches with the built-in DI framework, then see how we can extend it even further to add other behaviors. And then to top it all off, we build a dependency injection framework from scratch. This is by far the most complete dependency injection course you will find out there. Trust me, I checked all of them and will teach you everything you need from the very basics to some pretty, pretty advanced stuff. And it all comes from real world experience building huge scale microservices. Now, the first 100 of you who want to buy this course can use this code right here to get 15% off. So check it in the description, buy it if you want. And thank you very much for supporting the channel. So let's take a look at the project we will be applying this technique uh, on. So all I have here is a weather forecast controller. And even though it looks kind of, you know, the same as the built-in one, we actually use um, open weather forecast. I think that's what the name is to get um, the actual weather. So if I go here, we have an API key, which will be long gone, by the way. So don't even try. Um, and then we make the API call to that um, service. And if we get the weather back, we return it. If not, we return nothing. And if very quickly I run this, just to show you how it looks like, um, I'm going to open Postman. And as you can see, uh, I'm getting the weather back for London. Now, this is great and all, but here's the thing. What if I want to have a measuring mechanism to see how long this call over here takes, or maybe this call over here, or maybe on the controller level, this call over here. There's many ways to go about this, but just to deconstruct the basics of this, let's go here and let's say I want to measure how long this bit here takes. So the most basic way you would probably do this is you'd have a try here and you would place all that in that try and then you'd have a finally block. And in that final block is where you do your logging. So you would have something like a stopwatch here. And by the way, yes, this is not using a library. There are libraries that can do that, but we want to see what problem we're really solving behind the scenes so you can reuse it in your own examples. So we have the stopwatch here and we're starting a new one. Then this call will happen. And because finally block will execute at the end, we can say stopwatch dot um, stop. So that's a start. We want to say stop. Here we go. Um, and then we want to log that. So I injected an I logger here comes with the framework. And I can say logger dot log, let's say information here. Uh, and then for, first comes the message. So I can say weather retrieval for, and let's say London here completed in. And then the second argument is the time. So we would say city, which comes from the method arguments. And then the second is stopwatch dot elapsed milliseconds. And this should also say MS. So once we have that, if I run this API again, and I go back here and I call it, um, as you can see, now this returns the message I wanted, weather retrieval for London completed in 148 milliseconds. And if I repeat it, it's, it's faster because of caching and stuff. So that does what we want, right? And if we want to measure other things, let's say back here, I could wrap the calls I want with this try finally mechanism and I can measure anything. Now, here's the thing. This is a quite a bit of code and there's also quite a bit of nesting as well. We have this try thing and then we have the finally block and then the stopwatch has to be outside. So it can be in scope for both this and this. And it's just weird. It's a bit clunky and reusing it even though possible, you're probably going to have to write something like um, a delegate to pass this in there that can cause closures and scope problems. And it's kind of a mess. Now, here's where the using keyword comes in. And for those of you who don't know, the using keyword um, isn't real. 
what do I mean by that? Well, let's go ahead and make a simple class here just to, to prove something. I'm going to say example class here. Um, yes, I want to add this and I want to stop this from running. And I'm going to say public void. We just want to demonstrate something. So test. So let's say that I have an, an HTTP client, right? So new HTTP client. Now the HTTP client, if we go into the source code for this class, implements anytime now, um, if I go top, 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 here we go. It implements the message invoker, which implements the I disposable. So when something implements the I disposable, means that it can use the using keyword. And traditionally, you would use that keyword. And what this does is because you might not need this client later and it needs to be disposed in a special way because it involves IO network in this case, um, outside of this scope, the I disposable method will be called automatically. Now, this is true for things like databases, file system calls, network calls, anything that needs special disposal that can be just, you know, garbage collected and, and be done with it, could use this, assuming, and that's important, you understand how its scope works. For example, you could reuse an HTTP client, that, and that's totally fine. You don't have to dispose them. You can also technically reuse a singleton um, DB connection for some DBs that are okay with it. So you don't need to dispose everything. But if you know what you're doing, this will make sure that this client, once out of this scope, will be disposed. How does it do that? Well, like I said, the using keyword is not real. What do I mean by that? Well, what I mean is that this, what you're seeing here, which by the way, now can be written as this, so we can remove the nesting. And now you have this um, top level uh, sort of uh, using statement approach, which the way it works is it assumes that the scope of this method is this area here, the, basically the bottom um, curly brace, that's the scope. This is the equivalent of you going ahead and writing this, var client equals new HTTP client, then try, and no exception, that doesn't exist, finally, and then in the end, in here, it would do a null check and we'll call the dispose method. That's all it really does. That's what the using statement really translates into. And actually, we can prove that. I'm going to go ahead and open shoplab.io, which I've talked about in the past, but it is a, a, a website that allows you to see that lowered code. And what I can do is I can say public class my disposable, and I'm going to create a class that implements I disposable, right? And I'm going to go ahead and implement the dispose interface, the dispose call. So we have our own thing implementing our disposable. And now in that M method, I'm going to say using var disposable equals new my disposable, right? Look what happens on the right where you see the lowered code that the compiler will generate before it compiles to IL. So my disposable is out here exactly like I showed with the HTTP client, then the try method is where things like this um, will actually be. So if I say right line, then that goes in here, right? So you can see the link here. And then the finally will ensure that this thing is disposed immediately after we're outside of this scope. That's, that's all there is to it. It's just syntactic sugar, like so many things. We can leverage this, however, to do some interesting stuff. And this is where the fun starts. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this class here. And I'm going to go back to this code. If you're anything like me, you're probably thinking, hey, something outside of try, finally, something in finally. You don't have to dispose anything, but technically, we can leverage that behavior for something nice. Let's see what we can do. I'm going to go ahead and create a logging directory here. So logging. And I'm going to create a couple of things. First, I'm going to create a new class. And I'm going to call that timed log operation. Right? Because what we want is a way to log things in a timed manner within a scope. So that can now implement I disposable. You see where I'm going with this? So what we need here is an I logger of type T. So I'm going to go ahead and add T here. And that is our 
logger. And this can be read only as well. It doesn't need to be uh, mutable. And then we need a, we could have a log level. So let's say log level is this, but we're probably going to use information for this demo. Then we need the message itself. So string message underscore. And then we have private read only. Um, and that's an array of nullable objects, which is the argument. So args. Uh, and do we need anything else? We need the stopwatch. So this is read only stopwatch. Oh, so logger is implemented. We do not need the stopwatch. So everything else should be implemented in here. And then let me just make this like this so you can see it. And then for the stopwatch, we can just say stopwatch equals stopwatch dot start new. So now what's what happens? We have this stopwatch stop and logging thing. We can yoink that from here and put it in the dispose method because the dispose method is guaranteed to be called when the using thing goes out of scope because it will be forced to be disposed. So we can say stopwatch.stop and we're going to change that a bit. We're going to say log here to make it more generic. And then um, we're going to change that to underscore log level. And then we have the message. The message doesn't need to be this. So we can delete that. It can be message. Um, and we can use string interpolation here to have message um, completed in and then sw.lapsed milliseconds, which is really stopwatch here. Uh, here we go. And in the end, just underscore args. And that's it. And now we're going to go ahead and create a new class here. And we're going to call that logger extensions. And we're going to make this a static class and we're going to add a public static method that returns I disposable. Mm, interesting, right? And this will be timed operation. And it will accept a few things. First, it will accept this logger and that's going to be of type generic T. So here, logger. And then we're going to have the string message and the params of um, nullable objects. Here we go. Args. And all it does is it returns a new timed log operation of type T, of course, and that accepts the logger. We're going to default on information level for this uh, demo and then message and args. Now, watch this. I can go back to the service and all this code that you see, all this fluff can be deleted. Here we go. This goes away and this goes away and the nesting goes back here. And I can say using var underscore discard the value equals logger dot timed operation. For some reason, this was not picked up correctly because this is logger. I, I need I logger here. Fine. So this is now timed operation. And the message was whether for the city was London. So Wait, actually, how was this worded before? Uh, da, 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 da. Let's just copy that the way it was. So weather retrieval for that. So let's do that. Let's let's fast forward and say weather retrieval for that. And this will add automatically in the end the completed in part. So now if I go ahead and run this, what's what happens? Go back here, execute that. And it still has everything we had before. Weather retrieval for London completed in 142. And this is coming from this code because the dispose method is called. And in fact, let's just debug this. So kick off the debugger, take a breakpoint here and go ahead and call that endpoint again. And as you can see, we go in here. So this creates the object and the object is disposed because we didn't need it. And then it steps into the dispose method automatically. And now if we want to go ahead and add that sort of logic anywhere else, like let's say the controller, you want to log something, you can say using var underscore equals, and then I have the logger. So timed operation and, you know, um, get weather. So I can just say name of this and do that. And then if I run this, I'm going to go ahead and I get both. So get weather completed in 140 milliseconds because this is this. And if I go higher, I'm sure there's uh, that other call as well uh, logged. Yeah, here we go. So 
it's a very generic way of doing something pretty smart, I think, and it it makes use of a mechanic of the language for your own benefit, which I find pretty interesting. And you can actually do way more things than just this with it. But the main idea is to understand how the code is lowered, how dispose is called, and how you can leverage that. And of course, nothing says you have to use the top level scope thing. If you only want to uh, time, let's say, a different thing, like a, another scoped thing, you can do this. And then let's say I only want to time I don't know, the responses, how, how they are mapped. I can say this, and then I can put them in here, and then the timer is only here. Or you can take that and put it here. Ultimately, it's completely up to you. You have full control now, and you can scope this any way you want. And this is significantly less code than what we had before. And also, it's way more reusable. So this is what I want to show you. It's a very smart way, I think, to use the using keyword. And I'm interested to see what you can do with it. So please let me know down in the comments. Well, that's all I had for you for today. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making this videos possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video. Subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.